Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Book Lover, and right now we need to talk about the Abyss. Princess Lydia stood on her balcony with a glass of wine in hand, pensively looking out across the city of no Novosibirsk. Night had fallen, and the lights of the city appeared as numerous as the stars in the sky. The quiet of the moment always allowed Lydia, now the heir to the kingdom, an opportunity to reflect. Her life had taken a miraculous turn indeed. Once no more than a num humble nurse, she had climbed to the very top of the royal court to become the most powerful woman in all of Siberia. In the process, Lydia had acquired many friends and even a greater number of enemies, but the latter did not trouble her much. They would all learn to fall in line one way or the other. The only source of anxiety came in the form of her brother, Yuri. He was once a preferred candidate to succeed her father, but his hopes were dashed when the meteoric rise of his sister uh, with were dashed with the meteoric, meteoric rise of his sister. Lydia recalled that day in the Zemsky Sobor, when her brother angrily stormed out of the chamber in a fit of rage. Betrayal by one's own kin is among the worst kind of imaginable, and Lydia knew that Yuri was not likely to forgive her anytime soon. Lydia made a hard decision when she decided to make a play for the throne, make enemies of your own brother, or abandon Russia to be consigned to the ashtray of history in the end. She thought Lydia would not let familial quarrels stand in the way of her destiny. As the princess finished her glass, so wolf howled in the distance. Tomorrow her work begins. Moving forward and never looking back. My apologies for my sneeze and any other sounds I do make. Cool, and we just finished the guild system, in which we will do a strong realm. Infrastructure's not bad. Break the ice. Because yesterday we finished Chase's son. We'll do the Grand Royal Army. The Royal Army are the stalwart defenders of the kingdom, bravely fighting and dying in the service of the king. It was their might that brought the Far East under the royal banner, and we would do well to celebrate their glory in any way possible. Crown Princess Lydia had proposed a great series of reforms planned for the royal army intended to shape them into an even more effective fighting force. Using the lessons we learned fighting across the uncompromising terrain of the Russian Far East, we will further adapt the royal army's doctrine and encourage discipline and professionalism. We cannot suffer weaklings and cowards sullying the army's good name into that end and even stricter training regiment is to be put into place. His Majesty will have a grand army indeed, the envy of the world. Absolutely. In time for some coffee, shall we? Annual deficit, 1.29 billion. That's too much for my liking, but a total GDP of 79 billion is not too bad. But after this, so I asked you guys yesterday whether we should placate the, the companies or purge the selfish. Now overall, really, realistically, I would per, kind of prefer doing placate the companies, but someone did recommend we should go with purge the selfish. Despite Princess Lydia's clearly benevolent intentions towards those who conduct the business within the kingdom, there are some who simply do not care. We are receiving disturbing reports from the Oprichniki that some of the merchants and businessmen of the realm do not share the same vision Lydia has for Russia, and may actively be working to undermine her co covertly. This foolishness must be responded in to in kind. The Oprichniki shall deploy their agents to every corner of the realm and begin shutting down these hidden dissenters wherever they are found. No method is too strict when dealing with traitors, and no merchant is too influential to lie beyond reach. Their fate will seal the second they decided to defy his majesty's will. And follow up, subsidized health care. Uh, that's more cost, but poverty goes up. Or b poverty rate goes up. Maternal services, legacy of the Tsardom. Uh, let's do that one. Land for the loyal. Crown Princess Lydia has many to thank for a rise of power. The majority of these men and women are those of the aristocracy. Fearing the fate of the privileged status at the hands of Prince Yuri, they threw their lot in with Princess Lydia now that she has been named the king's heir. The time has come to settle upon the promises that were made. What would be the best way to show gratitude to the nobility? Land, of course. Our newly conquered territories in the far east are vast and empty, just waiting to be used. Surely the landed elite could find a purpose for these lands. Either way, these, state, these estates would be a just reward for having faith in the princess. God have faith in your princess. God have faith. Nice. Just keep cutting down for now. Since there's not much we can do. We can talk about Kazakhstan as well. But look, a little bit of money goes bye-bye. 80 billion? Not bad. Land for the loyal. And then we shall also do Legacy the Tsardom. Uh, oh, or maybe, no, we'll do this one instead. But let's get that construction stuff done first. So that's good. Let's grab some more max factories in the state with the blueprints. That's very nice. The Royal Foundries, the final conflict to determine the destiny of West... Or Russia is at hand after Iraq collapses. To the west, the last obstacle stands defined and prepares for the inevitable conflict. Our armies are expanding quickly to meet this challenge, and they will need plenty of guns to fulfill their bloody duties. The state of the kingdom's arms production facilities are simply inadequate to meet this increased demand. Princess Lydia has proposed the establishment of specialized foundries for the purpose of producing heavy war material. These facilities will be sponsored wholly by the crown and will be constructed in the newly conquered territories of the east. The king's war machine, or the kingdom's war machine, will be kicked into high gear, and his majesty's armed forces will have everything they need and more if it means Russia is made whole again. Ah, good. Better artillery. Love it, love it, love it, love it. 
Uh, maybe get some better tanks, maybe? I don't know if we have that much time to really produce many more tanks, but we'll see. Ah, I love the artillery. Royal Foundries, followed up with Legacy of the Tsardom. The whole kingdom of Siberia is a rightful successor to the old Russian Tsardom, and let none deny it. The Romanov remnants may claim otherwise, but their time is long past. These irrelevant old fools were the ones who led Russia to ruin in the first place and failed their subjects time and time again. They've lost whatever slim ties they had to their throne when they allowed it to slip from their fingers. Now follows a new dynasty to continue the Tsardom's legacy. Ours. His Majesty, Rurik II, has done more for the Russian monarchism than the Romanovs have done in nearly half a century, and with the help of this capable heir, Princess Lydia, Russia will be brought under the royal banners of the old, not the bloated and corrupt empire that collapsed under its own weight in 1917, but the culture civilization that pre preceded them. We shall recreate the old Tsardom for a new age. Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, and no suffering being done, Kazakhstan. Oh, we should probably keep doing this too, since we've got plenty of civvies, right? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yes, yes. More civvies for the nation. Absolutely. And then, preparing the Queen's Guard. Even more recruitable population factor. Less stability, stability and war support. Force our way. Yeah. King Rurik II's reign is absolute. For, for, for too long, he has paid heed to the Zemsky Sabor, listening to their empty complaints and selfish demands. Crown Princess Leaders enlighten him to a new, more effective approach, bypassing these useless bureaucrats altogether. The Zemsky Sobor will be made to understand that they serve the king, and not the other way around. They'll pay heed to his words, and never dare to question his authority. Democracy and constitutionalism would only invite anti-monarch sympathies to creep into the realm as time goes on. This cannot be allowed to happen. The king will rule with absolute majority, or none at all. All right, let's see. Uh, what are these? Are these tanks? Oh, they are tanks. Ah, oh, I love the tanks. Oh, Boris has got an upgrade. Nice. And then we'll prepare the Queen's Guard to hurt our stability a little bit more. The Lady King's Guard, who are the personal sword and shield of the King, following as every order with steely determination, at the behest of Crown Princess Lydia. A large-scale expansion of the Guard is to take place, most notably as a planned creation of a new force, the Queen's Guard. Commanded by the General Anna Couture, the Queen's Guard has become Princess Lydia's personal honor guard. Once she is inevitably succeeding or, or succeeds her father to become Tsaritsa of Alvarus, this force will take over the duty to the King's Guard and become a single entity. Once established, the Queen's Guard shall stand ready to face any threat that dares to show itself in Princess Lydia's presence. Total service equality. Wow. Kinda wild. Nice. Very, very good. And the next technology will be done in a little more than a month, a month and a half, but a strong run low the wayside. Princess Lady had spent most of the day in her office reading reports and signing papers. It was a dreadfully dull afternoon, but the princess still tried her level best to approach the task with the very same meticulousness that she had been known for. Lady's attention at, uh, was drawn to the sound of loud footsteps drawing closer. She lifted her head to see her brother Yuri emerge from the half-open doorway. He did not look pleased. What's the meaning of this, Lydia? You're making me govern Ch uh, Chukotka? Lydia gave a half-hearted sigh. Are you not happy with the promotion, brother? I'll have you know that that promise was in need of. Do you think I'm bad word stupid? This might as well be exile. You only want me out of the capital so you'll never have to hear my complaints again. Yuri's voice was raised to the brink of screaming. Oh, Yuri, it's never good enough for you, is it? You should be lucky you're being giving a job at all. Everything I do, I do it for the good of the realm. If you can only understand that. You walk down a dark road, Lydia. But first you bring the Zemsky to board to heal. Now you exile your own brother. This is not the way our kingdom should be governed. It goes against everything that, everything our father wanted. Lydia looked distant as her brother spoke. Please, sister, excuse me if you must. Exile me if you must. But do not allow yourself to become a tyrant. Russia suffered through too much already. As you returned to, to, to leave his sister's office, Lydia remained silent. Her brother's words had fallen on deaf ears. Farewell, Prince Yuri. Oh boy. And a strong realm. The kingdom of Siberia is, a mi is mighty indeed, but where there are still those who are unhappy, unhappy with the stability it provides and actively work against us in the shadows, in particular. The far-flung regions of the Far East are a hotbed for separatism, with thousands of ingrates clamoring for concessions of various flavors. We do not have the best, we do not have the time or the, nor the patience to listen to these dissenters. The boots of the royal army shall be placed firmly on the neck of the Far East, teaching those who would speak out against the crown to respect their betters once and for all. As for any insurgents who hide in the hills, their time will come soon enough. His Majesty's armed forces will dominate their land and sky, and these rebels cannot hope to hide from them forever. Once all descending voices are silenced, a stronger, safer realm will become reality. We get more stability, which is good, and infrastructure, and infrastructure, and slightly decreased according time. Only the best, one by one. 
the new recruits of what would become the Queen's Guard traversed the obstacle course before them, moving at a breakneck pace that would break those of a weak constitution. These hardy women were handpicked from various units for the Royal Army, some with, the, with years of service to the King under the belt. The Queen's Guard, however, was cut above the regular army unit. Only the most elite of the elite were going to make it. Today, the recruits found themselves under more pressure than usual, and a coat caught sir. The newly promoted captain of the unit was supervising the training. There would be no room for mediocrity under her watch. Faster, you wretches, faster. Move like your lives depend on it. Coats had been yelling encouragement of similar nature all afternoon. The voice of the captain felt like a cattle prod to the recruits, forcing them to push their bodies as far as they could go. Her gaze wa wandered towards the back of the squad. Kotsur couldn't help but notice one of the recruits was struggling to climb a rope. Hey, you call that climbing? Get your booty and gear! The attention of her captain visibly causing the straining uh, recruit even more stress. She was drenched in sweat and her limbs shook under the, str the strain. As the recruit attempted to in vain to reach higher, she finally achieved her breaking point. Kotsur watched as the woman's face went white, letting go of the rope as she seemingly passed out. The unconscious... Recruit landed hard in the mud below as medics rushed her from the sideline to her aid. The captain shook her head. This one clearly did not have the makings of a queen's guard. Service in the guard is a privilege. Cool. And subsidized healthcare expansion. Before her meteoric rise to become the most humble, most powerful woman in the kingdom, Princess Lydia was but a humble nurse. As such, she understand that the current state of healthcare in the kingdom is subpar. Thousands go without proper treatment due to the limited size of the program, and Princess Lydia wishes to end this problem as soon as possible. A large series of subsidies shall be given to the kingdom's healthcare system, intended to aid with the expansion of the services. Never again will the king's subjects be forced to wait for death due to the woefully under-equipped healthcare service. Princess Lydia will see to it that all Russians, young and old, receive the care and attention that they do need. Nice. Uh, what is the GDP like right now? Well, there's all that stuff. We're building a lot of roads, or air bases, I guess. Uh, 1.5 billion, that's not bad. Let's come over here first and do some defensive, uh, passive defense stuff. Too useful to punish after we have some coffee. Queen Rogneda looked up at the messenger, her eyes looking over the man's skinny figure as he reported the current information on the Queen's Guard. He, she listened only with the most mild interest, instead focused on the newest reports of industrialization throughout the report. Only when the messenger stated the report when the two guards were reported, intermingling in a phrase. Fraternization is normal, I suppose. Our simple removal will do, she said. Yes, your highness, but those relations were of an unsavory sort, n unnatural and of the homosexual. <laughs> ah, she thought that explains it. What are your names? Maxim and Yuri, your excellency. I see, you were dismissed. The messenger walked away, making sure to close the door to her chamber as quietly as possible. Rogneda Rog leaned back in her chair, closing her eyes. That relationship was disgusting, but not exactly unknown amongst those in the army. Her father often called the bonds of battle stronger than love itself. Still, while expected, she couldn't let it slide. They were dangers both to her image of the people and the security of the palace if they were to be found out. Calling up the captain of the guard and receiving multiple reports from the Oprishniki, she came to the conclusion that aside from the French relationship, that they were loyal, more importantly, they had been competent soldiers to her father in the 50s. Would it truly be wise to dismiss such people due to the disorders, which seemingly had not harmed their ability to work? Taking out a piece of paper, she wrote an order to the captain for both of them to be stationed on opposite sides of the palace, and that they were to be placed on guard duty at two separate shifts. Let's hope the people don't find this out, and busy axes. Simeon groaned sleepily as he woke to the sharp banging on his front door. Who could possibly be trying to visit him at this hour, he thought. He turned to see if his wife was out late again, only to discover she was right next to him. Still lost in a deep sleep. The banging continued loud enough, loud enough to startle him despite being a few, few rooms away. Gosh darn it, Simeon mumbled as he got out of bed. In the state, he journeyed to the front door was daunting indeed. The banging persisted, each sequence just louder than the last. Whoever it was, they were clearly impatient. Just wait, I'm on my way, good lord. By the time he had reached the door, Simeon had mostly managed to regain his bearings. He took a uh, peek through the peephole just to see who was his, who his late visitor was. Then he saw then what he saw made his blood run cold. There were four large men wearing uniforms resembling those of the police. Before he could react, the man kicked in in front kicked the door with all his might, causing it to fling open. Simeon yelled as he was knocked onto his back. The sound of heavy boots filled the room as the men moved inside. Simeon Stoyanovich. By the orders of his majesty, you are under arrest for conspiring against the crown. Simon gave a confused look to the officer, worlds failing to form. The officers did not wait for his reply. One by one, they grabbed Simeon by the arms and began dragging him out of the room. Simeon saw his wife emerge just as the situation escalated. Oh my goodness, she cried, falling to her knees in despair as Simeon was pulled into the hallway and out of her sight. He wondered if he'd ever see her again. The Oprishniki always gets their man. Oh look, we got a lot of research done. Uh, this one more factory output, please, thank you. Anti tank. Cool. RPG 2. Kind of old at this point. Nice. More healthcare and maternal services. As the expansion of the health of the kingdom's healthcare services continue, our focus has begun to shift on establishing proper maternity services for aspiring mothers of the realm. Currently, our hospitals are still not properly set up to handle such duties with any degree of care. How is the kingdom's next generation supposed to come into prop being without proper support for the mothers? 
This will be yet another step toward Princess Lydia's goal to pay heed to the women of Russia and their plight. All will receive equal treatment under the princess's watch, man or woman, so long as they learn to respect her royal authority. Cool. And our cost? Wow, that is some high cost, but... Eh, more than doubled after we did the uh, healthcare stuff. But let's do this one, the Icebreakers of Magadan. The Far East now lies under royal authority, and with it we have secured the most vital port of Magadan. Although it's not extensively naval, it's not the most extensive naval facility in Russia. It is nonetheless the only one we have of any significance. As such, the port shall become the main window between our kingdom and the rest of the world. Unfortunately, the port is frozen over during much of the year. We need to invest in a fleet of icebreakers to spearhead a merchant marine and clear a path through the Arctic waters. These large ships will not be cheap, but any price is worth paying to open a reliable avenue of international trade. Nice. Nothing else there, and do we get some stuff here too? done too? Nice. Cool. We'll be done in two weeks. And the bar... Barians of Rus. Our forefathers were a warlike, seafaring people who navigated the countless rivers of the Rus to form the foundations of what would eventually become Russia. To better recreate the tactics used by our forefathers, Princess Lydia has advised the form formation of a new naval infantry force, the Varyags. These highly skilled marines are to undertake a wide variety of duties, from amphibious landings to large river crossings, and will only consist of the very best that the kingdom has to offer. A new academy will be established in Magadan for the purpose of training the Varyags. Varyags, who are envisioned as an elite force intended to serve as the tip of the spear for the Royal Navy's amphibious forces. Cool. And... Cool, got that done. Let's get some APCs. That'd be very, very nice. Very nice. Followed with... Our friends of the sphere. The Japanese of the co-prosperity sphere have long been a friend to our kingdom. The diplomatic overtures we have made in the past have succeeded in putting the incidents of the past behind us and heralded a new future for Russo-Japanese relations. Princess Lydia has advised that we tighten relations with Japan and seek to negotiate a stronger partnership with Tokyo. To that end, King Rook II himself will embark upon a state visit to Japan. He will meet with their leaders and personally work out a new trade deal with the Japanese, no doubt. The people of Japan will find his mannerisms rather strange, but this could actually work in their favor. The media attention resulting from this visit may just shed new light on our situation here in Russia. If you'd like to read about cold days, please go right ahead, but it's quite worrying. But, I did not want to have war, but if we must, so be it. Um, I'm just going to do everything here. I don't really care what the cost is. A grand showdown, the, most, the final conflict. Very good. And we can do Kazakhstan. We might do that later. Maybe we'll see. Uh, we still have some cops to go through the advanced development stage. Just go and do all this stuff we can. Nice. Regional integration, not much else there. Could keep an eye on that now. And look at the trade deals. Across, access to the sea is finally ours, and the Kingdom of Siberia is officially open for business. Crown Prince Lydia is convinced that the best way forward for the economy is to invite foreign businesses to conduct businesses within our borders. Indeed, such investments will provide a substantial boost to our coffers and promote a healthy free market in the process. Diplomats are to be sent out to meet with the officials representing corporations and business conglomerates from all around the world in an attempt to convince them that Siberia is the premier spot for conducting rent trade. While some hard negotiations and a little luck, companies from all around the world will come to our shores in no time, and the Crown shall reap the lucrative benefits or rewards of their business. Nice. The king takes Tokyo. After we look at... Oh, crap. We have more civilian things. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, well, we have maxed out roads everywhere. Uh... We have maxed out air bases everywhere. Um, how about anti-air? Yeah, anti-air. We could use a lot more anti-air. Because nothing says Russia like anti-air. And lots more radar. There you go. Nothing shall be unseen. Because we already have maxed out radar over here too. So the king takes Tokyo, shall we? Rook the second was immediately overwhelmed by the sight that met him upon arriving in Tokyo. The horizon was entirely dominated with the lights and tall buildings larger than anything he had seen in Russia. The king had heard Japan was an endless jungle of concrete and neon, but now he truly knew what they had meant. So this is what civilization looks like. Imagine if we had such structures as back in Novosibirsk. Entering the airport terminal, Rurik was immediately met with a large delegation of Japanese diplomats. Judging by the looks on their faces, they appeared quite excited to meet him. The man at the front of the group gave a bow. Greetings, Rurik-sama. Allow me to extend a most well welcome. A uh, warm welcome to Japan. The gleeful diplomat warmly offered a handshake to the king. Thank you. By the way, it's Rurik. Rurik smiled nervously as he shook the diplomat's hand, who was visibly confused by the king's response. Erm, um, yes, of course, Rurik-sama. No, no, it's just Rurik. Rurik. Understand? I don't understand, Rurik-sama. Did I speak out of turn? The king became visibly flustered. I told you it's before he could finish. Rurik was pulled to the side by one of his entourage, who leaned in to whisper to his ear. Terribly sorry, your majesty, but he's merely using it as an honorific. Do not worry, he knows your name. Upon hearing this news, the king's face went red. The strange ways of the Japanese would take some effort to learn. What a strange and wonderful place. Look at that. More GDP and GDP growth? 
All right, not bad. Legacy the Varangians. King Rurik II stood before a podium preparing to give the speech that would baptize the first generation of Varyag Marines. Thousands of the elite soldiers had arranged before the king in a strict and orderly fashion, eagerly awaiting the, his words. The rows of Marines stretched nearly as far as the king could see, cleared his throne, and began. More than a millennium ago, ferocious seafaring warriors roamed the countless rivers of the Rus. The Northmen would eventually assemble the foundations of what would become Russia, founding the great cities of Kiev, Novgorod, and countless others. The deeds of these great wars continue to echo through the ages, even to this day, and there is no greater proof of this than the stalwart men and women who stand before me today. You have all trained very hard for this day, and now it has finally come. You, my brave Varyogs, shall become the sword and the shield of the Rus on the waves. No, ma no water will be too treacherous, no enemy too opposing, no victory too out of reach. Now go, my warriors, and make me proud. Your king shall observe your glorious exploits with great interest. As the king finished his speech, every single Varyog brought their heels together and gave a salute to their monarch. The soldiers then made a single overpowering cry, Long live the king, they will make us proud. Very cool. And we actually have a thing of Marines. Look at that. They're only 18 cover. That's kind of sucks, but you know what? Join the infantry. So I, I thought it was Zukov that had united the, the western part of uh, Russia, but apparently it's Tukhachevsky. Authoritarian socialism. Don't we all love authoritarian socialism? We have double his factories. Uh, he's got more than double our manpower. Uh, he's got up to 60 divisions, so that's probably not going to look very good for us. But, you know, it is what it is. But we do have 40 combo with infantry, so better army professionalism. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Excellent. And now we have spots and discipline with more attack and defense and just really good stuff all around. Holy crud. The modern Catherine. Thanks to the intelligent council, pr Crown Prince, this lady has been given to her father. The kingdom has been rejuvenated with newfound strength. Since she has worked day and night to forge a united Russia that would stand the test of time, with a powerful military command and a strong free market economy, Lydia's deeds have become renowned across the realm, and there is little doubt that she would be a worthy heir to Rurik II. Much like her father, Lydia has become a subject to a heroic myth of her own. The aggressiveness of her reforms have transformed the kingdom into a mighty state indeed, and comparisons are being drawn to the great re revival Russia experienced under Catherine the Great over 200 years ago. These encourage these comparisons, being a great admirer of the great empress herself. Rurik II grows older by the day. There are words that he may not be, mu be much longer for this world, but at least when uh, that horrible day comes, the kingdom will have a strong leader ready to take the wheel. All hail King Rurik II, all hail Crown Princess Lydia. For political power and more war support, thank you very much. And establish Western fortifications. Very good. So, a couple comments. So, I asked you guys yesterday, or just kind of figured that maybe we should attack Kazakhstan. Maybe we shouldn't attack Kazakhstan, you know? Um, so, there's actually quite a bit of support for us to attack. Quite a bit of support for us just to attack Kazakhstan and retake them because we want to unify all of the East. But uh, some other people said that do not do it because Lydia would be very honorable and keep to her word saying that we would not attack Kazakhstan or something like that. So, we'll see. If we can get any more influence, because if, if we can't get any influence or anything like that, I'm not sure how it worked at all. Honestly, like, <laughs> I've never done this before. We might just go with military intervention. It looks like these guys don't even care about Kazakhstan, so, <clears throat> the final days. Rurik II found himself increasingly frustrated by the effects of time. Everyday tasks had become unreasonably hard, and it was getting hard to even get out of bed in the morning. The taps of his cane echoed as he walked to his office at a speed that even a snail would want, find wanting. His daughter Lydia accompanied him, trying her level best to match her king's sluggish pace. Are you sure you don't need her? Oh, father? There was genuine concern in the princess's voice. I'm fine, Lydia, were excited. It's days like these that remind me I'm not long for this world. Do not say that, father. You know I don't like that when you talk of your own morality or mortality. I'm sorry, Lydia, but it's just... There's so much left to do. To die would be a, to abandon my duties. I think you've accomplished quite enough already. What we have achieved so far is nothing short of extraordinary, and it couldn't have been done without you. Asking any more would be unreasonable. Rurik stopped and turned to his daughter, grasping her hands. Lydia, tell me, will my realm be in good hands? Lydia met her father's gaze. Not a hint of doubt in her eyes. There is not a single person in this kingdom who cares for it like you and I do. Princess to lead us to glory. But what happened to the third kid? No, there's Boris. Yeah, there's, what happened to Boris? We have Yuri, we have Lydia, and Boris. He just, like, oh... I guess I'm not going to be king. I guess I'll be a duke. Is that is that what he's saying? Like, I got too much debt, or too much of a deficit. But it's okay as long as the economy is growing. But my question is, what happens when the economy is not growing as much, and we have economic bad times? That doesn't sound like very much fun. Now the question is, are they going to strike us first? Or are they going to strike? Or are we going to have to strike them first? Uh, let's close this. Uh, I'm not going to cut down military spending anymore. Uh, civilian spending, honestly, at this point, you can cut that down. Honestly, what if we did that? There you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Not bad. We can do it maybe one more time. Okay, twice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Are, you, are, are we sure that's... 
Oh, okay, so I wasted money then. Because by doing this, it uses 10% less civilian factories? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Whatever. At least we have a small little thing of uh, liquid reserves. I should have realized that I'd, I pretty much already had maxed out. Oh, let's get some more breakthrough. Um, consumer goods, because of the legacy of Siberian plant. Like, this is, now I understand a little bit better then. Yeah, consumer goods factories. And construction speed? Spend more money, get more consumer goods. We already have maxed out consumer goods. Minus 102%, so good. Like, my goodness. Minus 30%, expect minus 30% of our number of civilian and military factories to produce consumer goods. Insane. This is literally just raw factories. Just raw. We like it raw, don't we? Uh, strike Russia. I'm going to keep doing this up. Second night of long knives, and unfortunately, I'm out of coffee almost. Breaks my heart. The last war. I can only hope that it's us. Well, there goes the Iranian civil war. Cool. And uh, we could go to war. I want to be the kind of the defenders, though. I got quite a few tanks. A lot of RPGs. Before we go to war, or before they go to war with us, how's our plane situation like? Is it any good? Doesn't look like it. But uh, it looks like it could be a lot worse. So you guys go there. You guys go there. Uh, it looks like we got more than enough cast, though, realistically. Um, three, 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 one. Oh, there they go. Yay! We don't have to. We don't have to do anything. They just go to war with us. I love it. Awesome! 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 Uh, I'm not sure where they're at, but let's go ahead, I guess. Alright, we immediately win a couple battles. Lost about 1,000 versus 6.9,000. 6 Very nice. Oh, better infantry equipment already? Nice. Grab some more land out attack. That'd be pretty good to do. Oh, look at that. A simple motorized division. Looking not too thick. Very good, very good. Let's grab some more breakthroughs. Well, hope I gave everyone orders. Yeah, they did. There's two lines here, so that's pretty good. All right, they've lost 11,000. They've up to 70 divisions while we only have 41, which is not ideal, but hey, whatever. Um, keep going, guys. You're doing an okay job. You might get encircled here, but hey, as long as you kill these divisions off, that's the most important thing, right? Ah, they got the infantry there. Good. All right, we've lost 12,000 versus 44,000. You know what? Screw it. Spend more of the military. Oh, wait, we have the uh, ciphers done, too. I almost forgot about that. My goodness. Go ahead. Less breakthrough. Or more breakthrough, actually. Oh, we were actually defeated there. That's not good. 34,000, 76,000. Ah, oh, they have 64 divisions left. Not bad. Alright, so maybe stop doing that then. Go in there and just hold the line for a while. We'll, we'll manually do some strikes here and there, so. 120,000 versus about 50,000. Not bad. Well, uh, Moscow's a mess. Rex Commissary at Moscow is very, very messy. Alright, let's see what we can do around here about this. All of you guys, you can just go right here and just beat the crap out of them, probably. Oh, look at that. Get those tanks in there. Do we need, we need way more tanks, yeah. Way, 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 way more tanks. Tankies, where are you? We make about four a day. It's not bad, actually. That sucks. He lost that battle. 63,000 versus, wow, almost 300,000 already. Uh, are they out of manpower by now? No, they have plenty of manpower. But the right that they're losing manpower is extreme compared to us. Oh, they do have some planes, so we have less fighters, maybe? No, maybe not. We've got a lot of ground missions stuff, so that's kind of nice. All right, and let's get the next upgrade then. Why not? Industrial espionage? Cause, oh, wait, hold on. We only use you guys maybe too. Root our resistance. This will help lower their entrenchment a little bit. Not by much, but it does help lower their entrenchment a little bit. So that's why it can be worth doing. Nice. And but when we do that, they've already lost half a million people. Wow. <clears throat> they got plenty of AKNs. 
And we have 39 divisions of infantry. 40 combo with infantry on the front. And we do have Spartanic Discipline, so... Like, when our guys attack, I mean, it's brutal. Cool. Are they stopped at Are they done attacking? What? No. Guys. Did you guys give up on something? Or what, what's going on here, guys? Look at that. Did we lose that? We lost that battle, huh? Oh, nice. Good job, guys. Very good. 625,000 losses. Not bad. Are they out of manpower yet? Yes, they are. So, I guess it's time. Let's move on in, boys. Boys and girls, because technically we do have Queen's Guards here, so... They attack us, they might beat us up, but we have way more manpower than them, and any damage we do, they cannot replace or fix. So, yay. What the heck are you guys doing? Go over here, actually. Hit them off. Oh, they're trying to beat us back up. That's all right. 700,000. If we lose 200,000, 200, quarter million, totally fine with me. It's worth it. Rush is worth it. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Advanced armor skirts. Yes. Help out our armor. More armor. More armor. More armor. Hey, we cut them off. Look at that. Beautiful. Very good. 53 divisions. They still have more than us, but whatever. Not for long, though. And... There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. This is, this is super important. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Oh, that's so nice. We're running out of manpower ourselves. Oh, that's not good. We've lost a quarter million. They've lost over almost roughly 900,000. Pretty darn nice, I'd say. And they have up to 40 divisions. So, basically, we're equal in terms of divisions. They've lost about three times as nearly as we have. So, not great in some places here, but... Oh, well. And we're out of manpower, too. Mm. What a shame. What a shame. Keep going in, boys. They literally have no more strength. 137 divisions, 45 divisions. We have more divisions than they do now. Oh, well, we ran another one. Nice. Third of a million. If we lose about, let's say, half a million. I'm still okay with that. Since this is... Oh, yes, that is very good. Land Knight Attack is very good to get. I'll get rid of that one next. Why not? Can you three... What are you guys up to? Anyone have upgrades? No? No? Okay. I recommend you guys help these guys out. That'd be pretty good. There you go. Kill out those motorized. The Talos will be ours. Slowly run out of manpower. Goodbye, tanks. There you go. Another thirty budget boost, please. Thank you. Plenty of fuel. Obviously, I could be attacking a lot more, you know, intelligently. They lost over a million manpower. At this point, they they can't keep anything up. They have got to break. They have to break. Tanks, I'm sorry, but you've got to force the attack. You've got to win, win, win every single battle from here on out. You should be able to win that with. Absolute overwhelming air superiority. Come on, guys. Let's keep going. And they are going. So, don't get me wrong. They are going. How dare you try to beat us up? You piece of garbage. Wow. You, you're garbage. You are straight garbage. With air superiority, how are we losing? Well, look at that. 20 damage? Hmm. I'm not letting up. Nope. I refuse to let up. There you go. And then that power is gone immediately. So be it. That's our construction. Not bad. Let's grab some more research construction gate. If they exist, they shouldn't. Just kill them. Fake Russian government. Wow, these tanks are looking really weak. We need way more tanks now. Nice. 
Oh, are you done? Oh, this would help. There you go. Hopefully it'll help. Let's see anything else. Events development stage? Sure, why not? Sure, just keep clicking on buttons. Buttons, 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 buttons. At this point, I can't imagine them lasting that much longer. I mean, we've lost a lot of guys. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty inefficient the way I'm doing it. I have only 15 divisions left, though, so... I think I'm pretty much screwed. Keep going, keep going. Your goal is to get all the way up to here, guys. Find Tukachevsky, and we gotta get rid of him. If we need more roads... Do we already, we already built those civvies. Holy crap. Wow. These, this might be enemy territory for a while, but keep building up more civvies. Huh. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, the Marines are looking pretty weak, but that's alright. That is A-OK. -okay. Thanks for doing a great job. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is an extremely inefficient way for me to do it, but we still lost about a third of a million manpower versus... Well, it combines more like one and a half million better people, but hey, if you want to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Oh, okay, it just auto-clicked. Okay, whatever. I did not click the left button on my mouse, but whatever. We have modern industrial equipment. We don't have cutting edge, but hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Keep going, guys. It's a little disappointing that we didn't get any upgrades so far. Because there's been a lot of brutal fighting. Like, no joke. Lots of brutal fighting. With all this PP, though, we can just go and core, like, all this territory, hopefully. Just gonna take a little bit more time. Up to 11 divisions left. Not bad. Come on, do we have air superiority yet? Mm, maybe. Would you like to come to Kazakhstan? Would you like to come to Vologda? Would you like to come to Kargopol? Kargopol! Would you like to help build more civilian factories? <laughs> yeah, I think we won this war. I have a good feeling that we won. Oh, look, they're about to capitulate. Nice. Uh, you know what? I know people, someone, some, some of you guys recommend we don't do this. But at this point, we must do this since there's, there's nothing else we could do. Oh my god, 75 days? That's so long. So long. You know what? Screw that stuff. Just do that. Happy 1972, everyone, though. Uh, you're having a great year. And there goes the WRF. And let's lose a lot of political power and stability. Cool. And let's do this. Like normal. Let's go ahead and reunify all of Russia. Reunify the motherland. Long live King Rurik II. Nice. Long little star, cool. And so technically, that is the end, but we got one little thing left here. Named, uh, Kazakhstan. So we might as well military intervene. And you guys do that right there. Something like that, there you go. Just go when you can. <clears throat> as we have it played my part. Well, King Rurik II's end came gradually, and then all at once. He had been on the decline for years, his body getting slower, aching more and more. Then one day he collapsed at a meeting, having to be rushed to his room by his own generals. Despite ex ex expert care, it soon became apparent to everyone that the king was, of course, dying, unfortunately. The king awoke one last time, finding himself surrounded by his family, uh, by his children at his bedside, Yuri and Lydia. Even putting aside their differences for at least the, for the day, they hoped it would last that they would finally come together as a family. Perhaps they were too far gone, but perhaps not. Regardless, it was not his heir he spoke to, for he had said all that needed to be said to them days ago. It was Boris, the one among them who had never had any aspirations beyond duty and family. Tell me, are the people happy? Is our kingdom strong enough? The old king's voice was barely more than a whisper. Boris smiled. Yes, while the kingdom is strong, you've prepared us well for what's to come. Rurik nodded, sweat, wiping the sweat from his brow. Good, good. Then the whole charade was worth it in the end. The children didn't question his final words, perhaps assuming it was like it was madness like others had done since the beginning. Perhaps it was madness, but that didn't really matter. Russia was nearly whole again. United and strong, he had done all he could for his people. And his heir would do so much more. All that was, he was certain. While he had regrets, Rurik II, King of the Rus, was satisfied with what he had built. And so Nikolai Ivanovich Krylov closed his eyes for the last time, his duty finally ending. Applaud my 
exit. Oh no, not the king. No, not the king. But hey, what about civilian factories and the GDP and the economy? And oh boy. Man, can you imagine Princess and now Queen Lydia going to war against the Germans? Especially against Bormann when TNO2 comes out? Oh my goodness, that's going to be nuts. <gasps> wow, Mama Ragnetta is here. Oh, if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Oh boy, Ragnetta. Nita? Maybe Ragnetta. Maybe that's, that sounds a lot better than Ragnetta. 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 Mama Ragnetta. Hmm. Wait, Queen Wolf. Wolf Queen. The throne room was packed. Soldiers, generals, and nobles alike standing to the sides all focused on the queen. Lydia's attire was elegant but austere. A wolf pelt draped over her shoulders like a cloak. The finest men and women of the queen's guard flanking the path which led her to the regal throne. In the past, the Roman officers were crowned by a member of the church as a sign their power ultimately came from God. The rest had no time for such superstitious nonsense. The crown was held by one of the queen's guard, and no one would crown Lydia but herself. She grabbed the crown once she was specifically made for her. Holding in her, for, holding in her hands, she felt a pain of regret. Her father was dead, her brother in exile. Whatever the kingdom would face in the years to come, she would have to do it without them. She killed such thoughts. For the sake of the kingdom, she would have to move past these doubts, move past even being Lydia, but bury the queen, princess like she buried the nurse so long ago. She placed her crown atop her head. All hail Queen Rognig, Ro, Rognida. <clears throat> Excuse me about that. If you'd like to read about this, please go ahead. Queen of the Rus, the Queen's Guard declared to all gathered. Rogue Nida rose from her throne as the people collapsed. She allowed them a moment before she spoke. We've come far in the recent we've come far fair in the recent years. For one tiny spot in the Siberian wilderness, we've managed to forge a vast and mighty empire, defeating all those who have dared to challenge us. She declared to the hall, but our duty is not over. Where my father began, we must finish. Too many of our countrymen must suffer under the rule of the Teutonic masters, enslaved to the Reich's eagle. We must liberate a people and cast down Germany's moribund empire with steel and fire. Rogue Nida listened as subjects cheered on, her thoughts turning to what they lay ahead. All hail Queen Rognida. Oh, and that happened again. Desk approaches, thank you for playing. Well, it's not quite over yet. Oh, King Rogue the Second. Oh, no. I guess we'll do with Anna, but too bad Princess Lydia is not a general. She's going to be very offensive. <clears throat> Charismatic and offensive field marshal. Oh, we just did these, and wow. We're almost there. I think this is the last time I played uh, a Russian Warlord 2. That, uh, we took out Kazakhstan last. So not bad. Not bad. It's fine for now, whatever. Um, cool. Obviously, we won't get all this stuff done, but these are just literally just raw civilian factors. Nice. Oh, uh, income military spending, too. Wow, look at that. G oh, my goodness. Minus 10.7 billion. 163, uh... Total GDP at 37 billion in national debt. My goodness. Oh, God. Free military. Okay, it's free military factories. Uh, tanks, probably, right? We need more tanks. There you go. APCs. Oh. All right, we'll put you on top then. Oh, we need more rubber. Uh, okay, that's okay. We can probably import some rubber from the Japanese or Indonesia. Oh, we want to increase relations with the Japanese, right? Yes, we do. And we're done with our focus read with Mama Rog Nida the First. Oh, I love it. And we have innovative industry. We have modern and industrial equipment. Our poverty rate is, is not great, but it's still going up. And we would play this a little bit longer. We would get to probably 15 to 10%. So, or 15 to, 15 to 25%. We have modern agriculture. We've got modern research facilities, which is still going up by quite a bit. Modern research facilities. We would get to politicize academia. We've got this stuff done too. I'm not even going to be bothered looking at the stuff down here because it doesn't even matter. It really doesn't matter at all. So, we have 46 divisions versus... F Actually, 15 is not bad. That's probably the most divisions I've seen on this channel that the uh, Kazakhs, Kazakhstani, Kazakhstan people uh, have had. Usually, it's like five divisions at max, which is really kind of sad, but... Whatever. Now it's 11. Uh, guys, there's still a division here that you might need to eliminate. Thank you. 35. I mean, this is fun. This has been a really fun campaign. I've really enjoyed this uh, Kamarovo one because you guys recommended it, so... And in the comments below, please recommend me other nations to play in TNO, because I think I'm slowly running out of countries to play that have unique focus trees at the time of this recording. But hopefully there will be more updates coming out. But that's going to be it for us. I hope you enjoy this campaign. I know I certainly did, like I just said. And if you did enjoy the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all in a different campaign tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.